I have just a few uh, topics or uh, things that I'll be describing to you, and uh, they range from very large-scale kinds of uh, things that are going on to things that are going on within the school. Uh, I noticed that a lot of third-year students are out there this afternoon, so at the end they'll be seeing some of the things they're or hearing about what they're into. <clears throat> at the largest scale, uh, solar energy is being pushed and encouraged and uh, fostered in any way that it can by the can be by the federal government. Uh, the Energy Research and Development Administration is in the process of carrying out a charge that was given to it by Congress in '74, uh, during which uh, a uh, solar energy demonstration program was was proposed and uh, funds were made available for that. Uh, as part of this, uh, there is now in planning a Solar Energy Research Institute, which will be the national clearinghouse for all solar energy going on in the country. This institute will be located in one of the 50 states. And Indiana <clears throat> is one of the 50 that has proposed to the federal government that it be brought uh, home, that it be brought to Indiana and placed here. There has been uh, a thing called a state support team, which consisted of several members of this faculty plus some other people from around the uh, state of Indiana, other universities. Uh, and that state support team put together some kind of proposal uh, that would develop a rationale why the Solar Energy Research Institute should go to Indiana. Obviously, Indiana doesn't have much sun, uh, particularly if you look out the window today. You'll notice that we have considerable amount of overcast weather. And it seems kind of odd to be proposing a solar energy research institute for this part of the country. But the uh, charge in establishing this institute is that it not be necessarily in an area of clear climate, because it's really only performing the function of coordinating things. And uh, it will be the headquarters. It will have field stations around the United States in probably eight to 10 other places, which will be good climates for solar energy research. And at those stations, uh, specific research projects will be carried on. To give you an idea of how serious the government is about this, uh, this Solar Energy Research Institute will take about three years to pull together and formulate. But when it is completely put together, it will employ 1,500 people. And 680 or so of those will be professionals. The other 800 or so would be staff and support personnel. It's anticipated that this uh, institute will have an annual budget of uh, $48 million. And it's just to pay for its operation. Uh, also in the planning of this, uh, it's expected that there would be like 10 to 20 projects per year that would be undertaken. And uh, they would be in, intended to fulfill one of three roles that the Solar Institute would, would meet. One role would be to develop and improve tools that we have for designing solar energy uh, systems. The second role would be to constantly assess the status and develop options for energy policy that might be written by the federal government. And third would be uh, to serve as a clearinghouse and to facilitate the, the widespread introduction of solar energy to people not, uh, not generally aware of what's possible or people that uh, have a sense of the energy problem, but no, don't know what to do about it. And there's a lot of other statistics about how this would consist of, uh, would be directed by board of directors, and that board of directors would be made up of universities and so forth and so on. But the point of, of this is to simply state that the federal government is very serious about spreading the word on solar energy and facilitating and reinforcing its, uh, its development as a technology. If we look more locally at the state level here in Indiana, <clears throat> there's been a number of things that have been going on uh, in addition to putting together some kind of proposal for this institute. Um, about a year and a half ago, IUPUI put on a seminar in which uh, people came, I think there was about 350, and there were two or three participants uh, who directed the seminar. And their role was to give an overview of the state of the art at that time to the people in attendance. Most of the folks that attended the conference were engineers uh, from particularly the Indianapolis area, although there were a, a handful of architects uh, from Indianapolis and a few faculty from our school here. Uh, 
that conference lasted just one day, and it was really a very uh, superficial uh, kind of a thing because it was a survey. It was something that just sort of made you aware of what the state of the art was. It was not a, an effort at educating you as a technician or giving you tools for, for uh, doing solar design. More recently, however, uh, just this past July, uh, the Lieutenant Governor's Office, Lieutenant Governor Orr, um, brought some people in from Washington to explain to developers and builders in Indiana just how people in this part of the country, particularly in this, this state, could participate in some of the development programs that the federal government is sponsoring. And so uh, on July 30th, there was a conference that lasted about half a day. And um, guidelines were passed out and explanations were given as to how one goes about making a proposal to either the housing and urban, urban development part of ERDA or ERDA itself and uh, soliciting from them monies to pay for solar equipment on buildings. Now it's possible to get money that will pay for the difference in the cost of a regular residence uh, versus the cost of a residence that has solar equipment. And uh, this past uh, August or September, those requests for grant applications were submitted and sometime this February, uh, the winners or the receivers of that money will be announced. <clears throat> housing and urban development, of course, focuses on housing. ERDA, Energy Research and Development Administration, focuses on other buildings as well. It's a broader view. Of uh, all the states in the Union, <clears throat> only 27 received any kind of money on the first phase uh, from housing and urban development, and 22 received money from ERDA. And there was a little bit of overlap involved, and the net result is that nine states of the 50 did not get any money. Indiana was one of those. And uh, it will be interesting to see this February whether or not we as a state receive any dollars uh, in this area. <clears throat> Another topic uh, that I wanted to mention, which is at a more local level, is the fact that uh, a number of the faculty on, uh, here at the school are involved in various kinds of research, some of which you'll hear more about when uh, others get up and discuss uh, our efforts. Uh, I myself have been fortunate to receive some money from the college to do a little bit of research uh, to pay for student time and uh, some supplies and have been investigating how solar energy affects the flexibility, flexibility of dwellings. If we look at the history of housing, we see that there is a very long development of technical strategies which try to provide a housing configuration that can change over time and respond to family patterns, you know, adding children to the family, or children leaving the family, or can respond to just simply uh, different living patterns within the family that might be the result of a change of economic status or some other constraint. And so <clears throat> for a number of years, uh, this technology of housing has been under development. And that development of this flexibility approach has been based on the use of standard or conventional heating systems. Well, now that we're facing an energy crisis, we have a severe problem because solar technology could, in fact, undercut or create difficulties for all that history of, uh, of development in the, in the uh, housing configurations that, that have been uh, achieved. So the question is whether or not that uh, solar technology will limit flexibility or will compromise any of these flexible housing systems. And uh, so the research I've been in, engaged in, and uh, we've finished our rough draft, and probably in another week we'll have the final report, um, has been an attempt at evaluating that question. And uh, I've used a housing system that I developed, and we've, we've uh, come to some interesting uh, conclusions. One other comment locally, <clears throat> Incidentally, any of you that would be interested in that, I can make uh, copies available to you. One other thing locally is that uh, here at the university, more than just the architecture college is interested in solar energy. Uh, as you might know, there's a solar energy course taught in the Department of Physics by Dr. Ron Cosby. And natural resources and some other disciplines on campus have an interest in gathering literature and finding out what's going on in the solar energy field. <clears throat> As a result, we uh, 
we will probably see that in the next few months, a lot of the literature that comes into the university on this topic, solar energy, will probably be cataloged in Bracken uh, from now on. We do, however, in-house here in the CAP, we do have a reference shelf, which is called the ERL, Energy Research Library. And uh, that is a compilation of uh, various publications that are both cataloged and uncataloged. And it's available to anyone interested. <clears throat> the last thing that uh, I wanted to mention uh, was uh, what we're doing in Design Studio, because the unique problem of solar energy is not so much the hardware or the engineering issues. Uh, how do you increase collection? How do you increase efficiency? Those kinds of things. Um, that can be dealt with in engineering terms. But the real issue is how do you use solar technology uh, as architects, or how do you integrate this technology with the needs of people living in buildings or working in buildings. And so <clears throat> for a number of years, but particularly this year, we found various energy conscious type problems being given in Design Studio. This past year, um, if I can get the right buttons, there we go. This past year in uh, third year design, we've tried some different approaches, uh, energy conscious housing for the handicapped, uh, sort of dealing with two uh, complicated issues at once, not being satisfied with one problem. And um, these are some, some projects that uh, were the result of that, dealing with sites here locally in Muncie. Um, on the right, you see another example of Stan's uh, sun art. Um, <clears throat> The programs for these varied. These are just samples of, of work that was done in the studio. This is out by the Muncie Mall. And Uga will talk about these a little bit more later. But uh, the point is that in third year, for the last year or so, we've begun to address this in a formal way by giving design problems in this area. This year, in third year, we have coordinated all six sections of the design studio. All 89 students are presently engaged in uh, the AIA Research Corporation uh, solar housing competition. And we're designing uh, for the same site uh, 188 units on a piece of land over on Tillotson, multifamily housing, using various materials and various strategies of approach. But essentially, we will see a week from today 89 solutions to the same problem. And uh, the entire third year has been working on this very hard. I have in my hand, I don't know if you can see it, a huge thick document, which was their program, their statement of what the, the housing problem was. And uh, that competition, we will send the entries in by January 10th, and the, the winners will be announced shortly thereafter. Every school in the country is sending in at least uh, a maximum of four entries, and they have a distinguished uh, jury of about 10 people who will review those and come to some decision as to what seem to be very useful and reasonable approaches to energy conservation and solar housing. And with that, I think uh, I would like to turn the mic over to Uva and hear a little bit more about other projects that have gone on in the school and uh, some other comments that he has on research. <clears throat> 